Drew. It's Destination Yuri. I've got Kingsley with me, and I'm now looking ahead to when we go to music for you, Kingsley, oh. and uh, talking to Andrew here. Andrew, Gabriel's oboe might be nice if we can find it. Uh, Enya, Enya Ma, uh, Ma uh, with Gabriel's oboe. If you have that for later, you may give me the thumbs up if you get that. We know where we are. It's very beautiful. It's, it's a lovely music. piece. Submission. Lovely. Indeed. Oh, well done. Over and over again. Last night's Alpha course. The best spaghetti bolognese I've had in a wee while. <laughs> <laughs> you fed us as well. Uh -huh. And it was good to be there. And it was good to see the, the numbers. You must have had 18, doesn't 18? I about right? that, about yeah. That. Yes. Right, give me your own take. Just added it for the room. Yes, mm. well, good morning to your viewers. Uh, um, glad to be with you again, Ron. And uh, so it was very good of you to come along to the Alpha course at uh, Tesco's last night. Uh, it's, uh, we're just ourselves, we uh, are a humble folk, hopefully you found, uh, and we're just trying humble, to help people. Hum humble with humble, that's humble what we were humble, last night. Uh, uh, but it, wasn't, party. it wasn't good of me to come. It was an essential part of my journey hmm. to go there and to listen, to seek to be informed. And I often say, you know, Information, education is the soul of all development, and mm -hmm. that's what we were doing last night. Well, that's it. I mean, we're just helping people to hopefully have an open mind to God. Yeah. I mean, w we all come with uh, preconceived ideas of, do, of what God is like, whether it's from our own parents or whether yeah. it's from school or whatever. We, we all have ideas or concepts mm. of what God is like. But as we were saying there a few moments ago, you know, it's like we have to peel through the layers to try and find out, well, what is God really like, mm. you know? And, and I think the Alpha Course helps to do that. You know, it's not perfect, it's just no. another human course as it were, but it's definitely a tool, an instrument to help people I to must do say, that. I must say, I went there last night and I would have had part of the onion skins that I would have needed to peel back was the notion of a good and loving father allowing awfulness. Mm. And I mentioned when I said that God was a war criminal and I shocked you with that maybe, but. My, my rationale there was, and it was important for me when I was going in, mm -hmm. that's the significant thing. Uh, the rationale there was, at the time of the slaughter of the innocents by Herod, the angel appeared to, G to Mary and Joseph and said, save your boy. Mm. But the good and loving God mm. didn't do what he tells us to do. He should have saved the stranger's children as well. Mm. And I can't figure that one out. And before going in last mm. night, it was hugely important to me. And that was an obstacle for me. Mm. But already on the first night of the Alpha course, there was one thing that started coming through to me. Ever so slowly. Something that found resonances with my mantra, my motto, Ubi Caritas et Amor. Ubi caritas Deus UBS, where, where charity and love are, there is God. Mm. It was the centrality of the love of God that was coming to me last night. Mm. And that was a huge centrality. And it, it, it may put all the other things, the, the slaughter of the innocents, the 200,000 who died in the Haitian earth, uh, earthquake and tsunami, it put all of that on another level that couldn't combat love. Mm. And love actually was taking me on a on a surf ride over all of that detritus. It was there. And in a, in a funny way, those issues of my lack of understanding were no longer important. Mm -hmm. I was beginning to be more focused on love. Something I would have paid lip service to all mm -hmm. my life and, and occasionally done something about. But in the way it came out last night, and the way the, the speaker from London was, was, was delivering it, th that centrality of love was making a difference mm. to me. It's not bad for day one. I think that's, that's wonderful, you know, <laughs> but that's exactly the sort of thing which I think the Alpha Course does. And, you know, it really is helpful in that, in trying to peel back the layers, help people see, well, what is God really like? Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of things we can't understand, whether it's the Haitian earthquake, yeah. tsunami, even the slaughter of the innocents, mm. you know, I think the Greek Orthodox Church estimate there were about 40,000 people killed by Herod. I mean, Herod was a lunatic, there's no doubt Absolutely. about it. He killed his own sons Absolutely. as well. He did mm. two of his Absolutely. own children. He had a wife killed yeah. as well. Uh, I guess God just had to protect him, protect mm. Jesus from, yeah. from such yeah. a mad tyrant who was capable of doing anything. 
Yeah. But uh, but this world is full of destruction and hatred and you know if we focus on that it will take our attention. But I think maybe the Alpha Course, as you say, is helping us. Well, look, maybe there's something better we can put our attention on. You see, I don't have to. Um, I, I'm coming swiftly, not swiftly. I'm coming over a period of years to the to the belief that I don't have to understand everything. There's no way that I will ever, if I live three lifetimes on this earth, surrounded by the ionosphere and the atmosphere generally, uh, able at most to go to Mars, there's no way in ten lifetimes I am ever going to solve the problems of a loving God and terrible things happening. So I've got to park that and to realize that I've got to live in tandem with things that I will not understand, mm -hmm. but that there is a pathway of love that I am required to walk on. And that's possible, that's doable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's doable. And just uh, on Monday I walked through uh, Newry Library here, and uh, I mean it's a wonderful library, they've done great work to it. And I was just looking at all the books and thinking, you know, I'll never get to read all these books. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's like what you're saying, you know, there's, we'll never understand everything in this world. It's just, it's too much for us. We couldn't begin to, to take it all in. But that which we can understand, which I think God in His grace has given us a basic understanding of love, be it from a child up or, you know, there's something within us which, which knows what is right and is good. And I think it's that which hungers for Him. But as we allow that to sort of get thirsty and that hunger, then that we'll, we'll go, that there must be something bigger and better than you all see, of You see, if, if we consider the, the, that the interface between love that we're required to give, uh, give meaning to, mm -hmm. that love and the awfulness that occurs in the world, it's a most interesting dynamic between the two extremes. And the awfulness, the greater the awfulness, the greater the challenge to love. And whether we're doing it at the Haas talks in Belfast, whether we're doing it in Syria, whether we're doing it in Haiti as we rebuild after the earthquake, mm -hmm. uh, love, the primacy of love is carrying us through. Mm -hmm. I suppose maybe you really, really don't need to understand the very simplistic questions about human suffering that I was asking previously. Never thought I'd hear myself say that, <laughs> because I, they were never simplistic yeah. questions, but in the greater scheme of things, they might be, you know. Well, maybe there's a timing for these things, you know. Mm. We may not understand things now, but maybe as we go this journey, mm. we'll, we'll discover more. Mm. I mean, I'm just thinking back to what you were saying about the slaughter of the innocents and how that God protected Jesus from that, but then, what, 30 years later, he didn't protect him from the, the slaughter mm. under Pilate. Mm. And that's where we see the, the hatred and yet the love, all in the one thing, the mm. cross of Christ. It's kind of that dynamic. You know, it, it's an incredible it's thing. Tension there. But I think the what it shows me, and I think what the message of the cross is, just that love is greater than the evil. And mm. that's what the, the triumph of the cross, you know, it seems mm. foolishness. Why on earth? Would God come to earth mm. and give himself up in, in such an ugly and horrible way mm. only to say, look, I'm greater than this. This may be the worst you can do to me by hanging me up on a cross, but I'm even greater than that. I think the cock would only have to crow once and I'd say, I don't know him. <laughs> it wouldn't be three times. I'd be, a big, I'd be an ecclesiastical coward. That was a great book, The Confessions of a, an Ecclesiastical Coward, written by a guy called Morris. He ended up as the director, the controller of BBC in Northern Ireland. But the opening line of that book, which I read 50 years ago, uh, no less, 40 years ago, the opening line of that book was, the other day, a Zambian dropped dead at my front, he was a missionary in Zambia, a Zambian dropped dead at my front door. In his, in his stomach, uh, they found a tiny bundle of leaves. The Zambian man had starved to death. Oh, and, uh, but I mean, uh, so, uh, the, the, the Alpha Course, it, there were good people, there was a nice camaraderie going on, conversations were being struck up, people were getting to know a wee bit about each other, mm -hmm. you know, and that was interesting, it was very, very good. Well, that's part of it too, I mean, we're, we're meeting on a Thursday night down in Tesco's, 7 o'clock, if any of your viewers would to come along, there's still room. 
on a seven uh, seven o'clock. Mm. Just meet us at the customer service desk, and uh, we'll meet you there and bring you yeah. up for a meal and for the alpha course. It's important to get in at the start of the course. So really, next mm. week is kind of the last week to yeah, to sure. get on board. So if so anyone's let's, let's interested, do please let's do come do along. It. Yeah, next 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 Thursday night at at. Uh, Seven at Tesco, seven uh -huh. o'clock uh -huh. in Tesco's. And look, if I can do it, I was up at four o'clock yesterday morning, and if I, I I arranged my day that I was able to go to you at seven o'clock, mm -hmm. and that arrangement meant two hours in bed in the afternoon, and then by half nine I was back and in bed again, and up here this morning and in here uh, at a quarter past five, and that's a, it's a great great to know you're alive. <laughs> but that you see, Kingsley, that could have something to do with my timeline. Because I'm now 70 years along the timeline. Now, I, I wrote the other week in my column, who knows, I may not be here in five years. Possibly won't be here in 10 years. Probably won't be here in 20 years. Most assuredly will not be here in 50 years. And it's 50 years since the day I walked up the aisle with a beautiful woman called Marie, my wife. And uh, it only seems like 50 days mm -hmm. ago. How quickly time passes. Well, I see, you see, I think that's why it tells us in the Bible that God puts eternity in our hearts. You know, there's some expectation within us that we exist, but that we will go on, you know, and even though 50 years might seem just like oh, that, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I think that that's, a, you know, that we have this longing within us that there's an expectation, there's more, there's mm. more to this life than just the few years we have yeah. here on earth. Longing, Kingsley, is one thing, and it's an understandable human trait. I long for eternity in a state of bliss and happiness. But the reality is, maybe all I'm going to get is a rough wooden box in the ground. Well, looking at it on the face of it, yes, but that's where faith comes in. And uh, like the Alpha speaker was saying last night, uh, Charlie McKesey was saying that, you know, that there must be something more to this life. You know, why are there billions of people across the world all hungry for, for God and for something transcendent? There has to be something more. I, I got an answer to that as well, and it, it, it's, it's opening my mind up wonderfully. My, I, I, I wrote it down in my diary when, he, when, when Charlie was asking the question. Mm. He said, why are people seeking transcend mm. to, uh, to be transcendent and be, be, have an eternity of bliss and happiness? And I, I just put down need. They need to believe that, mm -hmm. otherwise they go mad here. You know, I would hate to believe that people are going to the Alpha course simply to uh, get the one-way ticket to heaven. That's not a reason for doing no, things. No, I don't think no, it is. Because no, uh, you're, you're, you're putting something in and expecting to get something out. Mm -hmm. no. I don't think that's good. I think no. you put it in. And even, even the notion it isn't giving that we receive, I think that's a bad notion. Because the Christian thing is not to give to receive. It's to give because it's the right thing to do. And God has given to us, you know, it's kind of responsive Abundance, what yeah. God has done for mm -hmm. us. And that's what grace is all about, you know, we don't deserve the love that God lavishes on us through Jesus. So we then sort of say, well, hopefully this will flow out of us to mm -hmm. others. And uh, I think I said it to you last time when I was on this uh, program that, you know, Christianity, what is it about? It's like beggars finding food and telling other beggars come over here, mm. there's food to be found. Yeah, and yeah. we're trying to say, look, there's mm. a grace, there's a God of grace to be found, and we're trying to make him to be known through all the layers of religion and all the stuff that <coughs> unfortunately mm. often gets in the way. But uh, there's a God of grace there that's well, I'm, to I'm, be found. Well, I'm committing to you now for the rest of the course. You are. Definitely. Well, I'm, I'm very going to be impressed. With you I wouldn't want to put you under pressure in front of all your viewers. No, I, so. I'll be there. <laughs> and if I'm going to be there, you, 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 you'll, you'll have to endure the presence of Rowan if, if you come to it. But do come. Mm. I, I don't bite and I'm quiet. I, don't, I make no noise. I'm there. But do come and you know, be exposed to the message that's coming through in the Alpha course. It's not namby-pamby, Bible-waving and shouting at the sky on an empty street. It's not that. It's challenging yourself in your life to know where you're going, why you're on the journey you're on, and what you can do to make the journey better for others. And it's the for others concept that Alpha will bring you into tune with. And 
uh, we uh, do come next next Thursday night to Tesco in Uri. Take the trouble to make it happen, because things don't happen accidentally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had to take trouble to make it happen. I'm mm -hmm. going to have to take trouble to make it happen for the next 11 weeks. So you do the same, and let's get our heads together, and let's talk, discuss, uh, debate, try to come up with answers, challenge, you know, it's all there. Nobody's telling you, nobody's telling you to be silent. You're being invited to participate in the Alpha thing. Oh, you know what would be lovely, Kingsley? I don't know how practical this will be for you. It's totally practical for me. But on the morning after each Thursday mm -hmm. that we find you here for 10 minutes, recapping the Alpha on the night before, so that we have Alpha in, rea in, in real time mm -hmm. on the Thursday night, and then we have Alpha going out from here on the Friday morning for 10, 15 minutes, every Friday morning after oh, the Thursday well. night. Fair enough. You, you're prepared to make a commitment on air. I think I'll have to do the same. We'll so, yes, do I'd that. I'd be glad to do that. We'll Ron. do that. I think that's brilliant. <laughs> Your viewers will put up with me here. Because, oh, they, they will because, you know, we're, oh, right. we're not into any, any namby-pamby religiosity here. We're, in, we're into the most important question in the entirety of the world, you know. Uh, if, if someone asks you tomorrow morning, do you want to win, if you have a choice, you'll win the Euro Millions Lottery, whatever that is, a lot of money, I think, or that a button is pushed in your deep core of your brain to give you an understanding of God. There's no contest. Mm. You don't want the millions. You know, I was just talking to a man very recently who's... Who been a drug addict and all, and, mm. and a, pretty, a pretty tough life, but uh, he has discovered the God of grace, and he actually used those words. He said, if someone offered me the Euro millions, he said, I would not take it for the mm. peace and the joy that I have discovered through faith in Jesus. Mm. So there's something that you can't put a price on when you it's discover true. the it's God true. of grace. You mentioned a man on drugs. Uh, I, I'm still looking for coats for my homeless people in Dublin. Mm -hmm. Would you put the word out quietly and gently? I can no, do. No beating big drums. Or, and you lot, uh, my dear friends, the viewers know this as well. Uh, if you get coats to me, now they need to be decent. Don't bring me rubbish. I don't want it. Uh, bring me decent second-hand coats that you no longer need. Uh, winter coats that if you get them to me here in Destination Yuri, by 12 o'clock the noontime hour on the Saturday, they will be... Uh, They'll have been chosen by the homeless people of Dublin themselves and will be on their backs. So that's a good kind of practical thing to be doing. Absolutely. And we'll all keep our eyes out for those coats. I'm going over to the good people of the St. Vincent de Paul after the show because I got a phone. Rowan, we have two more boxes of coats for you. So tomorrow morning they'll be in the cases being trundled down the road, uh, off at Connolly Station, down the steps with the two cases, onto the Lewis, out the four stops to Smithfield, then up past the Jemison Brewery and uh, Museum and into the centre. Mm -hmm. So do, do put the word out quietly and gently. I'll pay for your journey going down on the train. No, her, no, Her Majesty the Queen pays for it. You know, that's herself. Elizabeth. I pay my taxes. So you yeah, say, I'm paying, you are yeah. paying it. Yeah. And she, she does that. And she also sends me money every month. She sent her, her AD comp, she, he, he, he rang me once, she wrote, we need your bank details. I said, put it in writing. I'm ringing on behalf of the Queen. I said, put it in writing. I said, he said, we, we, we want to pay you some money. Ah, okay. Uh, this is my pension, I get it every month. Isn't it great? That's good. So if I, never, if I never earned another sixpence, I'm blessed in that my BBC pension, which is a pittance, and my state pension, which is a pittance, will always feed me mm -hmm. and keep the roof over my head. What a blessing to have. It is indeed. Goodness it is, gracious yeah. it is. Andrew, what music did we get? Is there a nice one that fits in with... Uh, you choose a nice one, maybe, maybe one of the Haley Westerner ones, or maybe uh, Beth uh, Nielsen Chapman ones, of a slightly nice contemplative spiritual thing. And that would be nice. We'll go with that shortly. So we'll remind them again, next Thursday evening, Tesco... 7 o'clock, the Alpha Course. Thank you, Ron. You're a good you. man. Thank Go you. well. God bless you. God bless you and your viewers today too. That's wonderful. Music maestro.